CERN. Time travel accidentally discovered by the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, Switzerland, CERN facilities. This is interesting, but false information circulating. The Large Hadron Collider does not run right now. It's disabled. And the funny excuse is the bird dropping bread into something that is sealed and to which no birds can access. Perhaps the birds were a star fleet. This is article November 15th, 2009. And recently we had another stoppage of CERN, Large Hadron Collider in Geneva. It suffered a devastating blow on April 28th. The infrastructure of the Large Hadron Collider powered down and the reason given was because of a type of a weasel. But there is a reason to believe that the Large Hadron Collider shut down not because of a weasel chewing on the 66 kilovolt power cable, but because they shook the planet with a violent earthquake. Many connect the CERN activity with the Vanuatu earthquake that shook the world on April 28th, and the earth reeled like a drunkard. A power outage, that's why the world's largest scientific experiment came to a halt, they say. The luckless weasel decided to have a meal of the 66 kilowatt power cable, eventually bringing the Large Hadron Collider to a stop. It's quite possible, of course, and this could be the reasoning that the Large Hadron Collider shut down. But there's a lot more to question in this case. There are a lot of events occurring due to CERN that are not being disclosed to the public. Going back to the 2009 article, it says that a few weeks ago, Italian scientist Sergio Bertolucci, who is, by the way, the director for research and scientific computing at CERN, said, quote, the Titanic machine, Large Hadron Collider, may possibly create or discover previously unimagined scientific phenomena or unknown unknowns for instance, an extra dimension. Out of this door might come something, or we might send something, something through it. On November 1st, the same day of the big experiment at Large Hadron Collider, something really strange happened at Airbus A330-300. The Iberworld Airbus A330-300, on behalf of Air Comet, registration ECIJH performing flight A7301 from Madrid, Barajas, Spain to Santa Cruz, Bolivia. Bolivia, that's across the Atlantic Ocean, with about 170 passengers, did not land in Santa Cruz, Bolivia, but in Santa Cruz, Canary Islands, belonging to Spain. Also known as Tenerife North or Tenerife. Los Rodeos Airport. After this mysterious event, CERN scientists shut down the Large Hadron Collider, blaming their fa failed experiment on a bird dropping a piece of bread onto outdoor machinery. Now, let's look at the distance between the two points. From Madrid, Barajas, Spain, to Santa Cruz, Bolivia. From Happy Zebra, distance calculation, from Madrid, Spain to Santa Cruz, Bolivia is 5,529 miles, almost 8,900 kilometers. An approximate travel time from Madrid, Spain to Santa Cruz, Bolivia is about 11 and a half hours. Experiments at the Large Hadron Collider and the mysterious Sun Gate time wave blacks out South America. This was an article by Sorcha Fall, November 13th, 2009. The interesting reports circulating, claiming that the massive power blackout that hit South America this past week was due to a time wave that emanated from the mysterious Bolivian Andes 
region called Tiahuanaco, where the mysterious 10-ton Gateway of the Sun monolithic carved from a single block of andesite granite is located. It was triggered by an anomalous event at the world's largest and highest energy particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider, in Switzerland, Geneva, run by the European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN, and it ripped through the thousands of ancient pyramid complexes located throughout Brazil and other countries of South America. Uh, in effect, it was uh, it had an effect on the ley lines of the world. Note, time wave, as referred to in these reports, are more commonly known in the Western world as gravitational waves, which are fluctuations in the curvature of space-time. Gravitational wave astronomy is an emerging branch of the observational astronomy, which aims to use gravitational waves to collect observational data about objects such as neutron stars and black holes, events such as supernova, and processes include those of the early universe shortly after the Big Bang. Gravitational waves are ripples in the curvature of space-time that propagate as waves, generated in certain gravitational interactions and traveling towards outwards from their source. The possibility of gravitational waves was discussed in 1893 by Heaviside using the analogy between the inverse square law in gravitation and electricity. Also predicted in 1916 by Albert Einstein, the basis of his theory of general relativity, gravitational waves transport energy as gravitational radiation, a form of radiant energy similar to electromagnetic radiation. According to the Kremlin reports, the CERN scientists at the Large Hadron Collider began a series of experiments of November 1, 2009, in preparation for the restarting of operations when they shockingly discovered that their testing was distorting our Earth's magnetic field and had shot off a time wave towards the core of our planet that their tracking showed veered exactly towards the sun gate high in the Bolivian Andes mountains. Most unfortunately, however, was when the initial time wave spawned by the Large Hadron Collider erupted from the sun gate and headed out towards the space above South America, where it literally glanced into the path of an Iberworld Iberia Airlines, Iberworld Airbus A330-300, flown by Air Comet, which was ready to begin its descent into Santa Cruz, Bolivia, but then found itself instantly and mysteriously over the skies of Santa Cruz de Tenerife, the Spanish Canary Islands, in, which are, of course, property of Spain, over 5,500 miles away about 8,900 kilometers away from their destination, landing destination. Note, all 170 passengers and crew of flight A7-301 were safe and after 17 hours on the ground in Spain, departed back to Bolivia where they arrived safe and sound. Now going to another link I leave for you, the Aviation Herald, where Air incidences are recorded. It records incident of Air Comet A333 near Tenerife on November 1, 2009, an unexplained diversion, they call it. It's an article by Simon Fradecki, Sunday, November 8, 2009, and he goes on to write, an Iberworld Airbus A330-300 on behalf of Air Comet Registration EC-1JH, performing flight A7-301 from Madrid Barajas Airport, Spain, to Santa Cruz, Bolivia, with about 170 passengers, did not land in Santa Cruz in Bolivia, but in Santa Cruz, Spain, Canary Islands, also known as Tenerife or Tenerife North, Tenerife Los Rodeos Airport. The airplane departed Tenerife again after about 17 hours on the ground. Passengers reported that the crew did not provide any explanation for the diversion, leading them to suspect that the crew had 
confused Santa Cruz in Bolivia with Santa Cruz on the Canary Islands. A few days later, Brazil refused to overflight permission to another air comet flight, and we can say here, see incident air comet A332 over Atlantic on November 6th. The flight route from Spain to Bolivia requires to fly through Brazilian airspace unless a very long detour is being accepted. After this mysterious event, CERN scientists shut down the Large Hadron Collider, blaming their failed experiment on bird dropping a piece of bread onto outdoor machinery. After which the Director for Research and Scientific Computing, Sergio Bertolucci, warned that the Titanic Large Hadron Collider machinery may possibly create or discover previously unimagined scientific phenomena or unknown unknowns such as an extra dimension. But even after shutting down the Large Hadron Collider, the dimensional distortions created in South America by this time wave continued to be felt and led to the gateway of the Sun monoliths sending out what Russian scientists have linked to a digital communication towards the thousands of pyramids in Brazil and other ancient sites throughout the Andes region of South America and leading to the massive power outage which took place November 11, 2009 that plunged tens of millions into darkness. The Brazilian government officials, in seeking to hide the true cause of this massive power outage, had originally blamed it on, quote, atmospheric discharges related to strong rain and wind, end quote. A claim immediately shot down by state prosecutors who are demanding the public be told the truth before the week is out. Even worse for these regions in South America, this report says, is that the effects of this time wave may be far from over, according to Russian scientists who have noted a marked increase in seismic activity throughout the locations of the most ancient sites in Chile, Bolivia, Paraguay, Brazil and Argentina. The latest of these sites to be hit by the effects of this time wave are the pre-Inca ruins located near Calama on the banks of the river Loa, which was struck today by a powerful 6.5 magnitude quake, and the Bolivian regions of Tiwanaco, struck by a 5.8 magnitude trembler shortly thereafter. Not being widely known to most people in the West is that the Americas have one of the largest concentrations of ancient sacred sites and pyramids in the world, especially in Brazil, where in 1996 the oldest of these structures was discovered and dated to have been built centuries before the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Unlike their Egyptian counterparts, however, the builders of the pyramids in the Americas are not known, and in the case of the 12 Brazilian pyramids lying near the Peruvian Andes Mountains, the longest and among the oldest mountains in the world, still unexplored. Even more interesting to note about the ancient origins of the people of South America is the base root of all their languages being tied to Europe in what many Russian historians categorize as the Andaluvian pre-flood period of human civilization before the last great cataclysmic changes to our Earth took place an estimated 5,000 years ago. Now with the age of South America Andes region known and being combined with the thousands of ancient pyramids and cities built there with their precision we are still unable to match in our modern times. Many Russian historians have long theorized that these great mountains became the home of the most advanced members of the pre-flood civilization who had fled there when our earth last overturned itself. They went to hide in the mountains and the caves to find safety. Even more interesting to note are those theories that state that the ancient survivors of these cataclysmic earth changes set up a warning system throughout South America, its vast Amazon region known to be the lungs of the world, that is connected to our entire planet to forewarn future generations of human kind when these horrors would be visited upon our species once again. And their method of establishing this warning system and encoding the memories of our Earth's most ancient past was through the building of pyramids all around the globe, 
of silicon rich stones such as granite and sandstone. Not known to many is that the basis of our present modern technological age is our Earth's most common metalloid, silicon, the second most abundant element after oxygen on our planet that makes up fully 25.7% of our Earth's crust and which without we would have no glass, no concrete, no cement, nor any electrical device and especially no computers. Even more importantly, the ability of silicon to both store and transmit power are termed vital to our planet's long-term survival against the ravages that nearly two centuries of using fossil fuel has visited upon us. What's not known to our scientists of today is how powerful this ancient silicon warning system actually is or how much of it is still intact. But now, after it's being struck by this new time wave, there are fearful glimpses, indeed, of the unimaginable power still latent within it. To what purpose does it hold for our present world? That's not known by today's scientists, but only of those of long ago yesterday's, of our human past, who have for the centuries warned of things to come. Much too sadly, there are too few left to heed the ancient warnings, let alone act to protect themselves from the catastrophic horrors to come. But for those seeking the truest knowledge of these things, they should start relearning how to listen to the rocks, a suggestion that the vast majority of these people will most certainly scoff and ridicule at, while at the same time listening to their music playing in their modified rocks for hearing the call radios or modified rocks for viewing what they call television or modified rocks for writing they call computers. Another interesting coincidence came from the story of a time traveler named John Titor. He said, My comments about the CERN lab are in reference to particle accelerators in general and other questions that have come up in the past. The major physics breakthrough for controlling gravity distortion does happen at CERN in your future. We haven't even touched the Z field compression yet, he says. Have we really created the first time gravity distortion machine of history? I'll leave links below for you for all this.